Hello friends, I'm Christopher. I just made mincemeat out of a whole bunch of twigs and old stalks and assorted um, canes from gooseberries and other plants with this fantastic Earthwise Chipper Shredder 15 amp. I'm going to tell you all about it. I recently came into possession of this Earthwise Chipper Shredder. It's got a lovely set of reviews online. It came pretty quickly. I'm, I got it because I want to manage the refuse in my garden better, especially at the end of the season. I've got a lot of woody stalks and vines and things that I just want to chip up and add to the compost bin that we built out there recently, so as to free up some space in some other compost places. And it's nicer to chip things when possible, to add them to the mulch, to return those nutrients back into the compost, into the soil, as opposed to just having a brush fire in this fire pit where we're filming right now. So let's crack this open and uh, get it put together. All right, the contents were packaged beautifully inside there. It was like Tetris. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. We've got the feeding bin tray, the pushing tool, some assembly pieces, legs, the actual machine, bucket, wheels. And it should be noted that my two foremen are on site today to inspect my job and see that I'm doing a good job. <laughs> so I'll put this together next. Oh yeah, good job. Good helper. Assembly was very easy. It took maybe 10 minutes, or rather I should say, it'll only take you 10 minutes if you're not also playing with kids and going to the potty and such. Uh, it's relatively heavy, which is nice because of course all the weight is right here in the motor. Some features right away. The wheels roll very easily. Of course I'm on small rocks here. I'll, I'll show you better later. In the back, the tray slides in and out nicely on some runners. The push buttons, mm, big, very satisfying. This is a reset button and this is a lock knob in reading the manual, something that I liked this has to be very tight or else the power button won't engage. When this is loose, the whole thing opens up so you can access the blades and the motor. I thought that was a nice safety feature. The hopper up here comes on and off also very easily. Some of those locking mechanisms. And of course, inside there's the extra tool to shove things into the hopper, or rather into the chipper. So the girls and I are going to go have lunch now, and, and then when it's quiet time, I think I'll sneak outside alone and run a couple different things through this to show you how it works and give you my opinion. So here we are during quiet time. I've got a bunch of dried out old things from last year over here to try out. This is going to be my first time turning it on. So I guess a live reaction shot, if you will. I'll stick you over here. Yeah, that'll be fine. Now, I've got some eye protection on in the form of sunglasses. Always want at least something over your eyes. And then I've got these relatively thick gloves here because I have thorns to deal with somewhere in here. So, here we go. I've done the first, well, I've done a first pass of this. Let me show you what I'm not putting in. This kind of stuff that's got a lot of soil on it or parts like this that have already started to rot. I, I collected a whole bunch of stuff here probably four weeks ago, maybe even five. And this is already starting to decompose. So it doesn't pay to shred it on through um, because this will break down quickly. I've been putting through these big viney bastards and twigs real long things so let's open it up Ooh. yeah look at that that's nice really it's catching a lot of it either way that's gonna break down quickly so I'll just take this for a dump quick I just built this compost corral yesterday from the time of recording so that I can purposefully do that. I just want to be 
keeping you know my refuse i got a, a pile of refuse over there these are old um sunflower stalks back here i just want a better way of managing that kind of old dry goods and then when i pull weeds or i have to clip plants they just go right in here and we mix it up so let's keep chipping so i overloaded it <laughs> in that last bit and it was actually smoking just a teeny wee bit so i undid the lock and i can see that it's just a little over full shall we say yeah and i don't know why it's not necessarily flowing through let's check the basket ah clogged here we go so how does that look like that's what a clog looks like down there that's no good so we'll clean it out from the bottom and the top and then get back to business it's good to have these kind of things on camera too you know so it's not just the gloriousness of this new product you have to get it by the way i'm completely unplugged and i'm still wearing my gloves in here yeah that'd be why it was smoking all right it's a little disappointing i have to admit the book recommends doing things that are more green and a mixture of things that are brown and i certainly thought that i was but perhaps you know some of this is just part of the learning curve right oh yeah see i can see a hole through there now it was clogged it even said in the instructions manual you know before you turn it off let it run a little bit just to make sure yeah here there's the wheels and stuff make sure they're nice and clear maybe i didn't do it enough and that clogged it and that's okay the nice part about this boy was it easy to open up and clean and i'm in my garden so i don't really so much care about making a mess on the ground after all my paths are already wood chips albeit bigger uh, so this is the blade right here you can see it actually rotating like so yeah i'm gonna finish cleaning that and we'll get back to work all right i just cleaned this out locked it back up i'm a little surprised that it didn't just shut off because there's the uh, circuit breaker right in case of overheating it shuts off maybe i was just about to push that limit but let's get it started see how it sounds oh like it should did really well look i completely cleared out that end that was nice and dry i've just got a couple things down here that had already started to rot we're gonna get rid of them and again just look at how nice right how nicely this chops up so let's go dump it we're gonna move this big guy right over here and tackle this uh thrush of gooseberry and raspberry bramble clippings our big heaping pile of gooseberries all done and turn into that just clean the rim that's it look at that nice you know some some bigger pieces but mostly all chopped up the fact that it fits inside this tiny bucket as opposed to a heaping mound over there there you go wunderbar now we get some big old sunflower canes all of those are done and they amounted to this much let's dump it oh it's beautiful absolutely fantastic that's all that i'm going to be chipping today which was quite a lot quite quite a lot i'll take a pitchfork and mix this all together i'll be mixing it quite a lot this summer that uh freed up this front bed right now I can do some work there and I can actually walk back here and I can do something with this space. Very satisfying. So let's talk about some of the um, interesting thoughts that I have about this after using it for a day. This was a wonderful experience. I have to say, I was, I was shocked wonderfully by a lot of things. So let's just, let's try to cover some things that I haven't said. 
it's a safe tool. So I'm sure you could tell from the shots earlier, there are two different circles up top. And as you feed the material in, it has to go down probably this much below that before it actually reaches the blades of the shredder. So you, you know, as you're following whatever you're feeding through here, you would really have to get your hands in a tight spot in order to even just barely reach the blade. It is awfully safe. You're gonna get kicked back before then. In fact, here, this is the distance, right? The stopper here ends like this and the chipper isn't until this far down. Like, that's that's more than my hand, right? This is way safer than I was expecting. I get a little leery about anything that has a rotating blade, right? You think about safety first, and once I truly understood that, getting into my rhythm, I felt very safe. Speaking of rhythms, uh, on the inside, the blade, of course, rotates in one direction, this direction, in fact. So although there are two holes at the top, I started putting the uh, putting the stopper in the right one and then feeding through the left. Not like it's going to wear it out anytime soon because, it, you know, if you put it in the right side, it just pulls the material over to the left. So why not just start over in the left anyways? And then you avoid it going crooked when you're feeding it through. I found that beneficial. And then I wasn't worried about just keeping the stopper in there and thinking, oh no, it's going to get torn up. It's not going to get torn up. It was not nearly as loud as I expected it to be. I didn't put hearing protection on just because I wanted to see what it was going to be like. It is electric after all, and um, I, I don't have any kind of, you know, tinnitus no pee in my ear after the fact. Uh, so it was nice and quiet. It's lightweight but sturdy. All the mass is really concentrated here. And of course, when you're chipping, it falls to the bottom and, and it gets a little bit heavier too, but that just adds to the stability. I wasn't worried about this rocking or anything as I was feeding it through, which is nice. And these great big wheels made it easy to move all throughout my garden. You know, I've got wood chips in here and then I've got bumpy soil and I got uh, limestone in the back. So it really hit a whole bunch of terrain and had I had no problem moving it. I'm glad that it got clogged on me the first time I tried it. What a weird thing to say, right? But I got to troubleshoot the one thing that I was worried about, right? The thing that I was thinking, oh, is this going to be able to handle what I'm wanting to do with it? And the answer was yes, but I had to learn how to use it properly, right? Maybe I was being too aggressive at first and just you know, shoving it in there instead of letting it take it at its, at its own pace or not going over the maximum bore width on the inside. And I certainly learned what to when too how bleh, how do I want to say this? I certainly were learned how wet was too wet for the material that was going through it. It had no problem with some of the green stuff that I just chopped out a couple of days. But when I got to things that were just a little bit starting to rot or who had too much soil on them, that's what clogged this up. But I was thrilled at how easy it was to open up clean and get right back to business. I started looking for this online to buy and I couldn't find any on the Facebook marketplace or Craigslist because probably these are so good people don't want to get rid of them. I found a lot of competitor brand electric ones at a lower amperage than this. Uh, I wanted something that was sturdy that could truly replace a gas model for what I needed it to do and this had no problem. Everything I did today was what I expect to do with this model. The only thing I really didn't do was say freshly fallen tree limbs, but we have a sizable enough property and we have a great big bonfire out back. And in the peak times in the summer, uh, you know, we can have a fire once or twice a week and, and that's usually how we get rid of our uh, actual twigs from trees. So everything I did today is exactly what I wanted it to do. I think cost is the barrier to entry on this particular model and uh, it will be for people, but my mantra when it comes to buying a tool is buy the one that's going to be best for the job you want to do, right? I wanted to do all the stuff in here and make sure I had enough power for it, but I didn't want to go gas. I'm, I'm in the process of switching over my gas models to electric as they die, or if I have to buy a new tool, I'm just getting electric. And I'm happy to say this had all the power that I expected with none of the fumes or having to deal with oil or having more capacity than I needed. I could have found something for maybe a hundred bucks more than what I paid for this online, a, a secondhand gas chopper. That really would have been great, but it, that felt like something that the professionals are throwing on the back of their truck 
and they're taken out to a job site to, uh, you know, chuck trees into. And I didn't need that. So I love it. I can't recommend it enough. I can't wait to use it throughout the season, year after year. I think this is going to get a good long life and I can uh, bum it out to responsible friends. And, and uh, it's great. I, I'm so satisfied with this. You know, look at how nice that is. Uh, I haven't I haven't taken my pitchfork and you know mix this up together, but we're gonna get some rain tonight. I'll mix this up and this will be you know nice and nice and low. This was taking up so much space unchipped and now it can return all of those nutrients into the soil into the compost that I can add into the garden right around us. Very, very satisfied. Do you have a chipper? Do you have an earthwise chipper? What do you like about yours? What do you like about this? Do you think I made the right choice? I do. Leave a respectful comment down below. And uh, happy gardening, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care.